Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. So a while ago, I did a couple of MIDI editing tutorials. In one, I showed hotkeys and in one, I showed mouse modifiers. In those videos, I focused on one key hotkeys that I use quite often. And here are some other hotkeys that are useful. As usual, I'm going to blast through these pretty quickly, just so you can see which ones you like and which ones you don't. And at the end, I'll put a list of all of them that you can screenshot. And at the bottom, I have my keyboard just so you can see what I'm pressing. But I'll also tell you because it may go too quickly. So don't blink. So here we are on my MIDI editing editing screen set I've spoken about this before and the first hotkey I'm going to show you is command and F and that full screens my MIDI editor and then if I hit it again it'll dock it back to where it was so most of the time I can just kind of work in full screen and if I need to see my timeline for whatever reason then I can dock it back and even in a docked position it's still pretty big next look at this cool mouse modifier if I have a time selection and I shift and double click it'll zoom to that time selection and it's also zooming to the bounds of the lowest and the highest notes which is really cool and then if I want to zoom to a specific part of my item I can also go control and Z and then it will zoom to that content another good navigational one is tab and when I showed my video for tap to transient pro tool style somebody said what about tap to transient for many items and I was like hell yeah that sounds good now if I hit tab that will happen and that is SPK 77 move edit cursor to start of next note so wherever my edit cursor is it'll go to the next note so the one I showed you the W S A and D that works from navigating between notes tab moves the edit cursor and then if I want to add notes to my selection I'm hitting shift and right to add notes this way or I can hit shift and left and add notes that way I can also play drum solos with it this way nasty stuff so those are some navigational ones so let's one more time shift double click and I've written this quick piano item let's listen to just a little bit of it So it's a very simple kind of like arpeggiated walk up melody thing and some chords underneath. So I thought my chords are a little bit too loud compared to the melody. So this is something I've shown before. I can just select all of them and I hit G and it'll bring down their velocity by 20. And now I want to select my melody. So obviously I can right click and drag on them because these are contained within one octave. But sometimes you may have a crazy melody and you have to go up and select a bunch of things. So another good one is command and I. Command and I is inverting the selection. So whatever is selected becomes unselected and whatever is unselected becomes selected. So I set the velocity of my chords how I like it. But let's say I actually want to kind of make this ramp up a little bit. So let's go to mouse modifiers real quick. MIDI CC lane, left click and drag. And I have command set to edit selected CC events if any otherwise draw and edit. So what this means is I can hold command and I can start dragging velocities. And as you can see, the chords below are completely unaffected. Let's give it a little bit of a ramp. So now the melody kind of starts a little soft and starts going up gets louder so that's really dope so also this is a really cool one i hit shift h to get to my hold pedal info and that's good for piano but overall whatever cc lanes you use you can come and set hotkeys to so set cc lane to blah 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 so i have my mod wheel to c that's the one i use a lot expression to e and i think i have shift h to hold pedal but if you use a lot of different cc lanes the ones that you use quite commonly add a hotkey to it i also have my control and tab to go to the next CC lane and I have my control shift and tab to come back through CC lanes. So that's another cool way of navigating through your CC lanes. So next thing I wanna show you is really useful for kind of any kind of melodies or arpeggios or something like this. So the notes of what I wanna play are there, but I wanna experiment with a few things. So for example, I wanna see what happens if these arpeggios were descending instead of ascending. So instead of going da 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 da, they went da 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 da. So I can come and edit this manually, bring this up, bring this up, bring this down, bring this down, but that takes a little bit of time. What I rather do is to hit option, command and L, and that does it. And that is this action, invert, reverse vertically, selected notes. A total different feel, right? If I select these notes as well, where basically the ascending melody changes and I hit it, it doesn't reverse them properly because it's seeing five notes and it's trying to kind of anchor the mid position of all these notes. It becomes something else. Which you can decide is cool. Doesn't sound bad. 
But yeah, it's taking the anchor point as the middle of all the selected notes. So when you do all notes, it always kind of goes out of key a little bit or gets weird. So instead, I like to do it kind of bit by bit. So if I do that bit, then I can do this bit. And then with these, what I can do where I have an ascending note, I can reverse these and then I can come and select those and reverse those. So that's a quick way of reversing things. And now there's another thing you can do. You can reverse things. And again, just to show you how it works, it's better if the rhythm is a little bit different. So I'm gonna just delete a few of these notes. And here's another really good one. If I hit Command and L, this action will pop up. Set note ends to start of next note legato. So that's another really useful one. I hit Command Shift and R, and now basically it's like reversing things this way. So blap, normally it sounds like this. and reversed sounds like this. And I like these sorts of experimentations because, uh, you know, our brains as instrumentalists and composers start to fall into some patterns that we're comfortable with. I like a lot of ascending melodies. I like a lot of chord voicings that kind of move one step at a time. And these are things that could kind of give some extra spice to your compositions that you may normally not do. Speaking of voicings, here's some extra stuff. Last videos, I showed you eight and two for transposing one semitone, four and six on your numpad to go left and right. And I'm going through these really quickly and then I had five to go up a fifth option and five to go down a fifth and I had command option eight to duplicate an octave up duplicate an octave down all of that is cool here's another one with these chords selected I can go control command shift and eight and I will invert the voicing so now we're at the first inversion of these chords and I can keep going if I want blah 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 so normal triad d minor d6 D64. This is how you quickly invert voicings. And then if I want to invert voicings down, again, it's Control, Command, Shift, and 2. I really like the numpad applications. I showed you most of them, but I left this one out, and here it is. So inverting voicings, splap, 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 splap. And one more time, if you select all of the notes and you start inverting voicings, if some are like scattered up a few octaves. So as you can see, these last two chords aren't being inverted, and now they are being inverted. So again, it's taking the entire range of notes that we have so from this D to this C and it's inverting the voicings of those it's just taking the lowest notes in the whole range bringing it up now the lowest note is this E now that goes up now it's the F F goes up now it's the G and so on for more precise applications it's better to just kind of go through it chord by chord and that's a quick way of inverting voicings all right let's go to a next item and here's another good one I have command option and period to take me to the next item on the track and then comma takes me to the previous item those are these two Two little icons on your keyboard that kind of look like arrows so option and shift and i'll be navigating through different items on my timeline and as you can see their lengths are different but each time it zooms to the entire item which is really useful quick navigation action so all right cool let's introduce some drums So here's another useful one. When you got other instruments going, this can be really useful. If I hit shift S, a few things happens. It starts playing my item and it also solos it, which is nice. So I can preview it like that. And then if I hit pause, it goes back to unsoloing it. So it does a few things kind of at the same time, which is very useful. And this is SWS command toggle play from edit cursor position and solo active item for the duration. Whatever item you're on and wherever your edit cursor is, you hit it and it solos it from there. And once you stop, it unsolos it. So really good for quickly kind of seeing what you're doing. And obviously even if I'm in full screen and I don't even see my arrange view to solo something, I can still use this. So while you're listening, it won't work because of the edit cursor. But if you want, you can make a custom action that puts your edit cursor on the play cursor and then runs this command. But what ifs? Okay, here's another thing I want to show you. So I want to write a really quick chord progression Let's do it real quick. And I want to select all of these and bring up the velocity. And here's a really good action. Also split notes on grid. So my grid is set to 1.8. And if I hit command option and X, now I've turned my simple chords to a little rhythm. But it's not quite there yet, is it? So here's another really useful mouse modifier. If I hold Control, Command, and Shift, my icon changes to this little thing, which is like an arrow with like a bunch of MIDI notes. And now I can start pulling. And this is like a strumming effect or an arpeggiate effect. And actually, maybe let's make it a little more staccato. Woo! 
I mean, name a better piano loop. I'll wait. So this one is stretch note positions, ignoring snap, arpeggiate. And there are a few other options as well. You can just stretch them, which stretches them to grid. So that would make them more like... like more of a quantized arpeggio and it's more natural it's more human right humans play it more like that this cursor is really how it's the easiest to explain this mouse modifier whatever note i'm on it's like pulling on the bow on a bow and arrow from that moment so the two extremes the highest and the lowest notes don't move at all Let's full screen. So if I start pulling from here, as you can see, the highest notes don't move and the lowest note also doesn't move, but every other note moves. Let's quantize them again. So if you have multiple chords, it's probably best to take them one by one so that again, you have maximum control. Cause if I select all these chords and I make it strummy, as you can see, this note doesn't move and then later it may not sound how you like it. So I select all these chords, do a little bit of that. And then I can select all these chords. And you know, if this time my anchor where I'm pulling from is the highest, note then that's like an upstrum so so it goes brip and then brrrp like that so very cool mouse modifier i use this a lot and if we go back to our little piano chords i can always humanize this like i showed you before play with their timing a little bit but then this starts to happen which is actually not very human let's find one where it's weird like this and that's not really how hands work when you're playing a chord i'm never really playing a chord like it's more like or what's better to do is like quantize this and that's really how chords are played. For melodies, I can just use the normal humanize. Because with melodies, yeah, we're slightly early or slightly late. So that's it for today. I hope you learned a ton. This was really like an addendum to all the stuff that we have covered in the past. A lot of my most useful hotkeys are still in those videos. So definitely watch those if you haven't. And if you have, I hope this is a bunch of extra functionality you can add to your MIDI editing. Here's the list so you can look at them and change the hotkeys or whatever. Take a screenshot of this if you want. If you like the work I do, please consider donating to me through buymeacoffee.com. Link of that will be in the description. Thanks to all the previous donors. I really appreciate all of you. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.